In 2006, I was saying goodbye to a friend at a rail station in Cambridge, UK. And as I helped her onto the car with her bags, I gave her a kiss and a hug goodbye. And as I stepped back to get off, the automatic closing doors closed on, on the bottom corner of my coat and got trapped. I tried everything to pull it free, but nothing happened. As the engine started to rev up on the train, I figured at this point that I wasn't going to make it. I thought, this is it, I'm going to die. The train pulled out at great speed. I lost my footing and was dragged along the platform and then eventually between the edge of the platform and the speeding train itself. And then I was sucked under the wheels. I was thrown around relentlessly. It was like being thrown into a dark, aggressive, violent machine. It was extremely painful and, and terrifying. But by a miracle, I survived. The paramedics arrived um, really quick, jumped on the track, started cutting through my clothes. They got me in an ambulance and, uh, and I was in hospital um, half an hour later. And when I arrived, there was a whole team of medics waiting for me. As the surgeons fought to save me, I left my body. I left the drama of the hospital, the pain and the agony that I'd just been through. I was now in a, in a warm, dark, but comfortable space. I didn't know where I was. I tried to get my bearings and as I looked around me, I was suddenly greeted by these orbs of colour, orbs of light that were slowly pulsating all around me. Colours of reds, golds, ambers, greens. And I figured at this stage that I hadn't made it. I figured I must be dead. But you know what? I didn't resist it. I didn't try to fight it. It's not like I wanted to die, but I felt protected, so I was okay. Then I decided to check on the wounds that my body had received f from the accident. My left arm in particular, I knew that was in a bad way. It had been severed. It had been cut from the elbow down. But as I looked over, everything was in place. My whole body was just fine. There wasn't an, even a single scratch or bruise or cut, nothing and no pain. Then I realised I was no longer laid on the hospital trolley that I'd been on for some time. I was now on this huge granite rock, something like a medieval altar, but I felt safe on it. I felt, it felt comfortable. It was odd because I was no longer clothed. I was just covered in this blue satin, silky textured material to protect me. So I laid my head back and closed my eyes. Then light started to appear through my eyelids. And as I looked up into the darkness, there were three symmetrical grids of white light coming in towards me. The light was so bright that normally with the human eye, you wouldn't be able to look into it. But in this realm, it was possible. In fact, I couldn't take my gaze away because there was a healing force coming from this light that was so hypnotic. And I felt the energy of this light was just covering the whole of my body as if to heal all the trauma that my body had just been through in the accident. So I lay back and closed my eyes yet again and just kind of bathed in this healing energy. And as time went on, I felt the presence of somebody near me. I felt somebody had arrived. So I lifted my head and I looked and there stood at my feet was this beautiful androgynous being wearing a very simple contemporary black t-shirt with this white blonde hair, but this skin that was glowing from within. It was radiating light that was just so amazing. In this realm, there was no sound, only telepathy. And as I looked at this person, I figured that I'd known this person for a long time, throughout my whole life and beyond. And I said out loud, I know you, don't I? Who are you? Who are you? Where do I know you from? And he or she just gave me this knowing smile. And I was being told, you are safe, you are protected. So I laid back my head and closed my eyes, feeling safe in the presence of this being of light. Then I became aware of two people either side of me. So I opened my eyes again, and to my right there was a girl with dark skin and long brown hair in a simple dress. Whereas the girl to my left was wearing a more traditional outfit. She was either Asian, Indian, American Indian, or maybe Brazilian in appearance. But they both had their hands slowly hovering over my body. They were healing me, but the healing energy that was coming from their hands was different. This was one of unconditional love. 
that seemed to be going beneath the surface. They were healing the wounds to my soul. They were healing all the injuries and the hurt that I'd had over the years that we all carry with us. You know, the baggage, as we call it. That baggage was being taken off me bit by bit. It felt like they were peeling off all the layers and getting down to the pure essence of my soul. It was like they were giving my soul a chance to breathe and, and to flower. I felt myself open up to the universe. I felt universal energy coming through their hands. It was tremendous. It was so liberating. I'd never felt this in the whole of my life. And it was it, everything started to make sense. Everything was clear that my whole life had been thwarted by concerns about the past. I was so focused on the past. I was so focused on past mistakes, past opportunities that I thought I'd missed. Or I was concerned about the future, where my life was going to go, because my life at this point, up until the accident, was in a mess. I was broke, I was running out of money, but suddenly it didn't matter, you know. There was no sense of worrying about the past or the future, because... I suddenly realized that in this realm, that time did not exist. Time was irrelevant. The only thing that really mattered was the present moment. Then I started to think about my family because they turned up at the hospital. They were upset. They were traumatized by the whole thing. You know, my mum was in tears, I remember. But when I thought about them now, it wasn't like me of old. My me of old would have been feeling guilt and shame like it was all my fault that this had happened. All that had gone, all I felt was just pure love for them. That was the only concern I had, was love. So I tried to ease my way over the side of this huge rock, hoping to see my family. But as I looked down, I couldn't see them at all. Instead, I was looking at this incredible sight. It was a, an awesome waterfall of stars. It was incredible. It was like something the size of Niagara Falls, let's say. But instead of millions of tons of water falling over the edge it was billions of stars sparkling and shining shooting stars just falling down cutting through one galaxy into another and as my eyes focused i was seeing colors nebulous forming i was looking into infinity i realized that now i was no longer in what i figured to be a, a small warm darkened space i was in the universe itself and i felt the presence of that universe. I felt the energy of that universe moving forward and I was moving forward with it. I was part of the universe. We all are. And that was the moment of realization. Again, a moment of telepathy. So I pulled myself back over onto the rock and uh, I remember saying to myself, okay, well, I can't see my family, but that's okay because They'll be fine. They'll be experiencing all the wonders and all the joys that I'm now experiencing myself at some stage soon. So I laid my head back and closed my eyes and continued to enjoy all this healing energy that was coming through. And I learned that all three of these beings, the being of light, the two female forms of the side, giving me all this beautiful energy of love, had been with me throughout the whole of my life. They'd been there watching over me and I just hadn't known it I just hadn't been able to connect with them or tap in but now I was now I was completely connected with my guides but the most profound moment of my whole near-death experience was to was to happen at the end I actually felt it before I saw it again I was laid back you know absorbing all this beautiful energy of love that was coming through the hands of the healers there was a shift. That energy was suddenly became more intense. It became more powerful. And I knew something had changed. So I, I opened my eyes and lifted my head. And there ahead of me, coming through the stars, coming through the universe itself, was this huge tunnel of white light surrounded by dramatic flames that normally I would have been terrified by this whole sight. But it, now I, all I felt was joy and excitement as to what was happening. And then I was being told that what I was looking at here was the source of all creation. This was God. This was not the image of God that I'd always imagined God would look like in the textbooks from school or the images of the guy with the beard on the ceiling of the Vatican or whatever. This tunnel of white light, this pure white light that was causing every single molecule of my body to vibrate with love 
was the source of all creation, and this was where it was at. It was at that point that I came crashing back into my body. I was back in the hospital. All the pain came rushing through, you know, and all the sound and the noise of that hospital was just so loud. It was like overkill. But all I could sense was, why have they sent me back? What's just happened there? Why am I back here, you know? And uh, what is my mission, basically? I didn't feel a sense of, like, disappointment. I was still filled with love. And I thought, okay, what is my mission? I was then taken into the operating room and uh, eight hours later I was coming through from the anaesthetic. I remember, yes, okay, I was trying to process, you know, the, the enormity of the accident going under a train and the fact that, you know, my whole body was just in agony at that point. But ultimately I was just focused on this incredible spiritual journey that I just had. So I decided for the first time in my life that I was going to create large dramatic paintings of what I'd seen in the afterlife, large canvases, just like the ones that the Renaissance painters used to do, the big biblical scenes. That's what I was going to do. So when I got out of hospital, I got to work. Once I was well enough to start, once I was fit enough, months later, I started painting. Yes, I was apprehensive at first because I didn't want to get this wrong. But as soon as I started to create the first painting, I knew that I was being helped. I felt like I was still attached to that other realm. They were giving me like a crash course on how to apply paint to a, a canvas, how to create flesh tones, tones of light and, and all those things. I was then inspired to start writing music to tell my story. I was inspired to start writing classical music for orchestra with no formal training. And in fact, to this day, I can still not read or write a single note of music. And I realised this is all happening because... I'd continued to be in that space. I continued to stay in the present moment and let go of the past, to let go of the, f of the future and realise that neither of those things exist anymore. And the only important thing is being in the present moment. And once you allow that, then you find peace. Then you find that you can hear your inner voice, your true authentic self and what you're meant to be doing. Staring lost about the